So, hello everyone and welcome back to Hemeldown Model Railway. I hope that everyone's had a wonderful Christmas and they've got all the gifts that they wanted. Um, I certainly did and that's what today's video is all about. Um, so I decided to go for a Oxford Rail mystery box. Um, and as you can see in front of you, with all their lovely packaging in it, um, that's what we're gonna have a look at today. Now I've already opened it up to see what's inside. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you the bits and pieces that you would get in with it. So I went for the LNER bundle. Um, so let's get on with the video and have a look. Right, so just removing all of this lovely packaging. Thought I'd do it behind camera rather than all of the uh, video jumping in and out. So I'm going to show you the bits and pieces that I got in the bundle. So let's go with the first item. So the first item that we've got here is the Bedford Ox flatbed trailer for the LNER. So as you can see in the LNER blue there. So I decided to go for the bundle because for the price of locos nowadays it's quite expensive just to go for one single loco and obviously I wanted to populate my um, layout with you know some extra details and stuff so having some bits like this um, it's a great way of actually being able to uh, to have some extra things for them for the price that you get so that was the first one. So then moving on to the next one. So we've got the Scammell Mechanical Horse Tank, or Horse Tanker, not Horse Tank, um, which is this one here. So it's a nice little three-wheeler lorry, which I think is quite nice, actually. The old LNER branding on it and stuff. So that's that one. Just gonna place them sort of in shot there so you can kind of have a little better look rather than me, my hands wobbling around all over the place. So the next one is the Scammell Mechanical Horse Flatbed, which is another L and ER. So it's slightly different to the other one, but be quite nice that I could maybe put some little details on that flatbed, i.e. another truck or something like that. Sorry, I'm hoping that this is all in focus and stuff, kind of reaching over the camera to show it. And there's that one. I'll just move the camera up a little bit so we can just have a little look. Then for the next item, I've got the Blue Morris 8E Saloon car, which is that one there. See with some of these, what I might do is actually just practice a little bit of my weathering and stuff in maybe some future videos or something like that, because they just do obviously look way too shiny, but I think these are fantastic little models. Especially for the scale and stuff, you know, a 176 and there's quite a bit of detail on that. I think they look pretty good. I do like this car, it's quite a nice little motor actually. So that's that one. Then for the next one. So the... Uh, Packaging's got a little bit of the dust off of uh, on the top of them. So this is the Pickford's tricycle van. So Pickford's express service. So that's the next one. I say for the the value of what's in the box and stuff. I don't think these are too bad, to be honest. 
it's nice to have more than just one little thing. And then, so in this box here, there's two of the same. Just opening it up, so bear with me a second. So we can swap out the trucks. And then we've got two of these. They're quite nice. So I'll just pop one of those on there for now. And then we've got, so in this box, I actually managed to get two um, wagons. Um, I know that there was somebody that opened up a uh, mystery box and they didn't actually get uh, the two wagons on there um, so I'm pretty happy with uh, getting two wagons because basically um, I don't have much sort of like rolling stock and stuff so um, I got this one which is the seven plank mineral wagon Milner Thomas and Co London number 1000 um, lovely little wagon actually and you know from my 12 days of Christmas I got um, some coal loads and stuff so I'm gonna do a little bit of a coal load in there as well. So I think they look better with something in it rather than just being sort of empty and stuff and it will add a little bit of weight to it and that as well. Um, but that's a nice little wagon there. I was actually looking at getting some wagon kits so it's quite nice to have uh, some that are already made and then I can kind of make some sort of bespoke ones as well and weather those up. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put that on the camera. Let me just sort of zoom out a little bit. Right, that's zooming in. So let's pop that one. Uh, where will we pop that one? Pop that one there just for now. I just had to clear off everything off the tracks. Uh, then right, so on to the next one. So this is the LNER four plank wagon. Um, it doesn't have anything on the back of the box, but I'll just show you the ticket there or the code number if anyone's interested and then let's just flip it round so a nice little bog standard eight ton northeastern wagon uh, all of these have got like the NEM couplings and stuff so that's quite good let's pop that one on there And then, um, I, that's all in the box, I'm just reaching through. So with the box, um, I got a loco as well. Um, it's an L and the R one. What I'm gonna do at the end of this video, not the end of the video, but um, I'll just show you kind of like a brief picture now, but then what I'll do is I'll open it up and um, give you a little bit of the background information that's on the back of the packaging. Um, just sort of like a, a little bit of a mini review and a little bit of a close-up. Um, I know it's not um, one of the latest models out or anything like that, but um, it's a loco that I've wanted. Um, it's only my second brand new loco, um, so I'm really happy to, to get finally, uh, you know, another lo brand new loco. I've got the Dean Goods um, Oxford Rail um, loco before. Um, it's a beautiful little runner. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to you know get some more brand new ones because so you've seen some of the runnings of my other ones that you know they're not too not too good and you know it's uh, they're a bit old and noisy and stuff. So I'm hoping that this one will run a little bit better. And I went for this one. So this is the LNER Class Q6 2265. Um, it's a just a a freight loco. Um, it's not a passenger loco or anything, um, hence the reason that the um, wagons that I've got at the back there um, will start the collection for it. I do have a few sort of old wagons kicking around that I'll probably do a little bit of weathering on and stuff like that as well. Um, I've got a few of these sort of kit ones, um, but I just need to add some couplings and stuff. Um, so I've got you know, 
one like this, but it just obviously needs to add some couplings too. Um, I'll probably change out some of the LMS stuff as well and just make it a bit sort of like the northeastern. Um, but I've also got one of these as well. So yeah, I've got a, a few sort of wagons. You've seen a couple that have been kicking around on my layout um, on a few of the videos and stuff. Um, but obviously I'll just get a few more kits and that as well. Um, so yeah, just going back to this one. Um, so fantastic little little loco. I'll show you the end of the box. So it's the Hornby R3541 LNER Class Q6 Locomotive 2265. Um, it's DCC ready. Um, glad that I'm getting a few more sort of DCC ready locos. My Dean's Good one is uh, Dean's Good one is as well um, because I will venture over to DCC in the future. Um, but yeah, um, really happy to to get obviously like I said a, a brand new loco. Um, it's quite a unique looking one as well. Um, so I will show you, like I said, uh, a little bit of a close up of this. And I'm currently just charging up my phone to run a, um, to do a little bit of a running, running session of it as well for you. So I hope you enjoy seeing that. Um, just on another couple of little bits that I got. So let me just lay that flat. So I also got, but this wasn't in the box, uh, but I got the Hornby telephone kiosk. Nice little sort of bit of detail to add to the layout. And finally, the last thing I got was these Hornby pillar boxes. So they're pretty funky. Some nice little additions to add into like the sort of town scene or something when I get that going on the new layout. So yeah, so though, that is everything. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what was in the mystery box. Um, you know, I'll just uh, pinch out a bit, but minus the other little bits that are on the top here. Um, for what, 149.99? It's pretty good to get, you know, a loco, two wagons. And what did I get? One, two, three, four, five bits of you know sort of cars and trucks and stuff so yeah i think it's definitely um a good sort of value um you know box i'm really happy to to receive these items it's absolutely fantastic i really love it um, i was so excited on christmas day um i kind of did know i was getting a mystery box but i wasn't sure um, on which one it was going to be um, but i'm really happy with the loco and stuff um i hope you agree it's a nice looking loco um like I say, it's not the most up-to-date and brand new one and stuff, but, you know, reading reviews and stuff, it's got all-wheel pick, all -wheel pick up and it's got quite a good, nice five-pole motor and flywheel inside. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be really happy to get this one on the layout. Um, I hope you enjoy sort of hearing a little bit of the, or seeing a little bit of the history. Um, all I'm going to do really is just read a little bit of stuff off the back here, um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background to it in case you don't know the loco. Um, so I hope you enjoy seeing that. Right, so I'm going to wrap up this part of the video. I'll leave you to watch a little bit of the history of it and a little bit of an up close. And then I'll just do a little bit of a running session and just show you. Um, hopefully the loco will go round on the curves that I've got. If not, I might just sort of go up and down on the station scene. Um, and I'll bung on a couple of those little wagons on there as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, there'll probably be no videos now until up until um, New Year's Eve. Um, I've got to go back to work tomorrow. Um, and we're working all the way up until New Year's Eve. Um, so I might just do like a little short video um, then. Uh, and then, like I said before, I'll be going on to doing the, um, the, the packing up video uh, because I'm now focusing on getting ready to move. Um, probably in that as well not trying to tempt fate but hopefully there's a model railway related gift for my birthday which is on the 7th of january um, so yeah let's uh, see if there's a video that i can make of that as well right everyone enjoy the rest of the video because i've been waffling on and kept saying that i was going to cut to the next part of the video but i definitely am now so i hope you enjoy it and i'll speak to you all soon bye for now
At the end of the first decade of the 20th century, the upsurging growth of mineral traffic in the northeast exceeded the amount of steam haulage available to transport it. The existing northeastern Q5 locomotives, designed by Wilson Warsdale, were extremely capable engines, but the new chief mechanical officer, Vincent Raven, felt a more powerful, superheated design would be justified in the circumstances. Between February 1913 and March 1921, 120 examples of Raven's new T28 coupled locomotives were built in six batches, resulting in a powerful, sturdy and reliable engine design that fulfilled its requirements to haul mineral and heavy freight traffic right through to the late 1967. The first 70 were built at Darlington, with the last batch of 50 being constructed by Armstrong Whitworth & Co of Newcastle. The class was not intended for passenger traffic and was therefore purely equipped with steam braking for both engine and tender, five different types of which were used with a locomotive which ranged from the early 3,940 gallon tenders to the later 4,125 self-trimming type. When the NER was absorbed into the LNER at grouping in 1923, the locomotive class was designed was designated as Q6 and they operated from sheds across the northeast of the territory from Humberside to Tyneside and across Northumberland into Cumbria, even making it into Scotland during 1923. Although the class remained visually similar during its lifetime, subtle, subtle differences arose when the boilers were updated, starting between 1927 and 1929. Identified by the boiler dome being placed just over a foot further back towards the cab, with the flatter aspect. In due course, all the engines were fitted with these new Diagram 50A boilers. Other detailed differences were evolutionary rather than revolutionary, with items such as smoke box doors, chimneys and buffers changing form, whilst the introduction of positive drive led to changes in the position of the lubricators. At nationalisation in 1948, all 120 engines were taken on by the British Rail, their numbers being placed in the 60XXX range and the process was completed by June 1951. The first withdrawal from service came in May 1960 and this only arose due to an accident. It was to be December 1961 before the next occurred and wasn't until April 1963 that withdrawal started in earnest. A single Q6 locomotive number 2238 has been preserved, saved by the North Eastern Locomotive Preservation Group and housed at the North York Moors Railway. Locomotive number 2265 entered traffic in March 1930 at Tyne Dock, having been built at Armstrong Whitworth with the work numbers 13. Moving through Borough Gardens and Stockton in 1924, the locomotive ended up at Newport from June the 9th, 1930, and it was whilst here on the December the 22nd, 1938, that it received its 50A boiler. In September 1944, 2265 moved across to Neville Hall before returning to Newport in May 1947 with its new LNER number 3422. Shortly after, in September that year, the locomotive moved to its last shed, West Hartlepool, from where it was withdrawn from service on May 18, 1964, as British Railway number 63422. I do hope you've enjoyed a little bit of the history. That was all just read off the back of the box. 
and I'll leave you now just to have a little close up of the loco.